My dear friends, good morning and welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are worshiping on this Lord's Day because we believe that the Holy Spirit has called us and gathered us to be here to honor God. And so we are among the people of God. Now you know we're beginning an earlier schedule. You're here. You know that. Maybe a few people will show up a little bit later. But I really appreciate that we're getting on this uh, new schedule. And also in that schedule at the end, we're not going to be having a post loop as we have uh, during this uh, period of time, going back to an earlier schedule. Of course, all of us are shaken by the catastrophic intensity and the damage of the hurricane. There's just no way to say what all of us happened yet, but it is terrible. Many of us have had friends and family who have been in harm's way. I don't know how it is for you right now, for your family and friends, uh, family that were in the harm's way, uh, got out of the area. So we do have a direct way to give money to that situation. And the way to do that is to give it through the Lutheran Domestic Relief Fund. Lutheran Domestic Relief Fund. And that will target uh, that hurricane situation and others. I put a check in this morning and put on the bottom line uh, that uh, notation, the Domestic Relief Fund. Next Sunday afternoon, we have a blessing of animals at 3 o'clock. We'll be over at the park, over at the uh, uh, wonderful pavilion we have. And so if you have your little friends, please bring them 3 o'clock. Now, our music is always special. Today, we have handbells with violins, and then also music at communion with Joni on the trumpet. Lots of good things happening. Thank you all so very, very much. God bless us all. And I have my white gloves on so I can play bells. And so we listen, we pray, and we give thanks.
communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also first reading for this morning is taken from the book of Habakkuk, the first chapter. The oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw, O Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and you will not listen? Or cry to you violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack, and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous, 
Therefore, judgment comes forth perverted. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on a rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write a vision, make it plain on tablets, so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come, it will not delay. Look at the proud, their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith. This is the word of the Lord. second lesson is taken from the book of Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God for the sake of the promise of life that is in Jesus Christ. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God whom I worship with clear conscience as my ancestors did. When I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our Lord or me, of me, his prisoner. But join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For the gospel I was appointed a herald and an, and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have Put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of such teaching, and you have heard from me 
in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. This is the word of the Lord. Jesus, meaning his study of the scriptures, he would read St. Paul who said, you know, by faith you're saved. And the prophet said, those who are righteous have faith. Faith you're saved. Habakkuk says, those who are righteous have faith. Well, what do they, according to Habakkuk, have? Well, the prophet is talking about a time that is very difficult for the Israelites. This was written about 3,600 years ago. So that's, that's an old writing, Old Testament. But the Israelites were in, now in that process of being taken over by foreign lands. So they were losing their homeland. They were losing what they had worked for. And so the prophet asked, how long, O Lord, must we wait? Are you going to do what you had promised? Bring us back into the promised land? How long will we wait? And the prophet hears from the Lord, Well, write words on tablets, and they're so large letters that even somebody who's running past can see that the Lord will save his people. So anyone who sees those words and believes them are righteous and have faith. 
And Luther picked up on that over and over again because the way we understand the New Testament is from the Old Testament. And so Paul has passages, as he does today, talking about rekindling your faith, rekindling what you had been given and what you understood in the past, even from your grandmother. And so he's talking about something that is given to us over and over again in our lifetime. I like this way of hearing Habakkuk in the same manner that we hear St. Paul speak to Timothy, his son, his brother. And these are teachings for him and teachings for all of us about faith. How could that be related to our gospel with a servant saying, well, I'm just a worthless slave. I'm just doing what I ought to do. Well, we Christians can pick up on that and say, well, we have righteousness before God as we do what God is calling us to do, to be his servants. What does that mean now? Serve other people. What does it mean now with the hurricane and the damage and so forth? It can be that we reach out in some particular way to help. Prayers, I've said so often, are important. Checking in with people that we know about, that's very important. And contributing money to the causes that will actually help people be able to get life back in a way that is similar to what they have. I mentioned Lutheran domestic relief. That is an excellent avenue for us because we know that there is no administrative cost with that. It just goes directly for help, and Lutherans have done this over and over and over again, and we will continue to do that worldwide, but this is domestic here at home. What would the prophet say? Remember that God is saving us. God is going to save us. That's his promise. Israel had destruction from foreign kingdoms, the Assyrians. Our friends in Florida and beyond have destruction because of a force that is totally uncontrollable, a hurricane and a terrible one. But yet we can ask with Habakkuk, are you going to save us, O Lord? And I am going to believe that you will come and save us. And as I believe that you will come and save us, save me, save all of us, as I believe that, that is a factor about faith. It's a factor in having faith in Jesus Christ, in God the Father, in the Spirit, that indeed God's help will come. That's what we have in Habakkuk. Luther found that to be extremely helpful to him in the unfolding of an understanding that we are indeed seen by God as just before the Lord and that our Savior will come and that will be our salvation. So if you want to read Habakkuk, it's a short read, but all of it is about God saving and when he comes. When are you going to help us? And it's a statement of faith. And we too have faith. Let's hold on to the faith that has been given to us. Amen.
turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit so that, attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Thou hold us by your spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God has mercy on us and forgives you for all your sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, he strengthens you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keeps you in eternal life. Amen. As we come to our prayers of intercessions, I love this beginning where we're talking about the grains of wheat that are scattered, and then they're gathered together into one bread. And so we gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. We pray for your holy church in every place and for those who serve following the example of Christ. Help them to live by faith and walk by the light of your gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For parts of the world ravaged by natural disaster, relieve those affected by floods, wildfires, droughts, earthquakes, tornadoes, and hurricanes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For every nation and for those entrusted with authority, grant our leaders self-discipline in all things and inspire them with love for your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For victims of violence, abuse, and neglect, heal those who have been harmed and protect those who are vulnerable. For all who are sick, especially those on our prayer and concern list, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For, those, for this and every congregation, rekindle your gifts within your people and inspire councils, committees, and individuals to plan and work together that all may know your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our brothers and sisters who have been in harm's way and lost so much because of the hurricane. Help each of us to be agents of Christ's love in our words and deeds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us trust in the good intentions of so many people in this time of helping one another in special ways. We remember the dead, the injured, people with no shelter and essentials of living. Please pause with me for a time of silence. We offer prayers of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving that you have abolished death, and for the saints who have died, bring us all to eternal life with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for gathering us together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, for we know of your grace and love in Jesus Christ. So we offer all of these, our prayers, to you, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with all of you. And also with you. And we share a sign of peace.
has given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks. To the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and ever living God, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In the precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you unto everlasting life.
the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.